It's James here from GoodGuitarist.com, and today I'm going to show you how to play Don't Want to Miss a Thing by Aerosmith. And I've come up with an arrangement that kind of takes the piano part and focuses on that during the verse. Instead of just doing a plain old strummer, just to make it a bit more interesting for, for you, you know, as you're learning it. And then during the chorus, it is just going to be a straight up strummer. Uh, as far as how difficult this song is, um, the chord shapes are going to be a bit of a stretch and there's a bar chord in it So it's not exactly a beginner song I'd say this one's in the middle of intermediate territory if along the way you find that you need some extra help I have a finger style course coming out and you can sign up below and I'll let you know when it's ready If you're interested in that and also if um, the bar chords are giving you trouble I already have a bar chord course out that's designed to kind of take you from the beginner stuff all the way into bar chords nice and gradually, you know, just building up into it, not just jumping in, because that's that doesn't work. Anyways, let's get started with the verse. Um, we're gonna do some chord shapes and then a really simple finger picking pattern. Our first shape looks like this. We have our pinky on the fifth fret of the A string. Then we have our ring finger on the fourth fret of the D string. And then our first finger on the second fret of the G string. And make sure that this second string can ring openly because we're going to be using that one too. So we want it to be ringing nicely. We're going to put our fingers on the middle four strings. So I have my thumb on the A string, then one, two, three. The pattern goes like this. So it starts off plucking the thumb and first finger together and then middle ring and then we just go one, two, three. So once again, I'll do it super slow. Then from there, we're gonna change our chord shape. And when we make the switch, it's easier if we do it in a certain order. So what I would do is move my pinky finger down to the fourth fret as I remove that finger. Then you put your first finger on the second fret of the D string and you put your middle finger right underneath it. So this one's a bit of a stretch for that pinky but um, it's not too difficult and we do the exact same picking pattern. And now the next one we're gonna move our pinky finger that way one string and we move our index finger that way one string. So we kind of just swapped them. They were like this and we just swapped them. And for this one, we're actually going to do our pattern a bit longer. So that's our normal pattern and then we'll add. So on this chord, the whole pattern. Now, we're gonna lift off these two fingers, slide our pinky back up to the fifth fret, then we're gonna, then we're gonna put our middle finger on the third fret of the thickest string, and our first finger on the second fret of the G string. And the pattern's the same, but we're gonna move our thumb to the thickest string, otherwise it's identical. And from here, once again, we're going to lift off these two fingers, slide our pinky back to the fourth fret, put our middle finger on the second fret of the ace or of the G string, sorry, and then our first finger on the second fret of the thickest string. And our thumb is still on the thickest string here, and we'll pluck it just like usual. And now we finally have an easy chord shape. We're going to leave our middle finger down, put our first finger just above it on the second fret of the D string. And for the finger picking, our thumb is on the thickest string. The other fingers are on the same strings that they've been on the whole time. And we're gonna do this one longer, just like we did a few chords ago. So that's the majority of the verse. We would just repeat that two times. So do all, that whole progression two times. And then we would move on and we would do this. Mm -hmm. 
and that helps us build up into the chorus. Because if we don't build up, it's kind of weird. We're just like all quiet, then all of a sudden it's like, don't want to close my and it, it's like really you know it's like too much of a contrast right we do kind of have to ramp up into it so let's take a look at that we start off with a shape that we've already used we have our middle finger on the second fret of the g string pinky on the fourth fret of the d string first finger on the second fret of the thickest string we're going to do just half of our pattern and then we're going to go down down up just with our finger really lightly. We're kind of just preparing the listener to start hearing some strumming, to start hearing some rhythm, you know, so we're blending a little bit of finger style and a little bit of rhythm. And then we go into this other shape, which once again, we've already taken a look at. And we do the exact same thing. You know, we do half our finger picking pattern and then we just really lightly and notice I'm, I'm not doing like a full strum, I'm just focusing on those strings, you know, just down, down, up. And then I go just to a plain old A chord. And at this point, we're gonna start strumming. So on this one, I just go down, 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 three times, and then I do five down ups. And the whole time, I'm going from quiet to loud, so. And at that point, we've kind of raised the volume and we're ready to start rocking the chorus. Anyways, before we do that, let's recap everything that we've done so far. I'm going to play through the whole thing super duper slowly. You're welcome to play along with me, or you could just observe, you know, see how it goes, and then always just rewind it and try it with me afterwards. Here we go, nice and slow. One, two, three, four. So that is by far the trickiest part of this whole thing. Uh, next, we're going to learn the chorus, which is just going to be chord shapes and a strumming pattern. Um, our first chord shape is D. And we're going to use uh, one of the stock strumming patterns on this one. It goes down, root, down, down, up. And root means to just hit the thicker strings on that chord shape. You know, so on a D chord, those are the bass notes. You know, if we had an E minor chord, those would be the bass notes of it. So, you know, just thinking about your chord shape, think about what's the lowest string and just aim for that. You don't have to do it, but it definitely adds a lot of dynamics to this strumming pattern instead of just having like a flat, like, it's, just makes it, you know, come out a little bit more. Anyways, we're gonna do that strumming pattern one time on a D chord. Then we're gonna switch to A over C sharp. And for that one, I'm just playing the A chord with my first finger, muting the highest string. You can have it open if you want, but whatever, it doesn't really matter. Then we take our pinky finger and put it on the fourth fret of the A string. So this is an A chord, this is C sharp. That's why we get A over C sharp, because it's an A chord over a C sharp bass note. We're gonna do our strumming pattern one time on this one. 
Then we switch to an E minor chord. We do our strumming pattern once. And then we go down, root, down. So that's just like the first three motions of the pattern. And instead of doing that down up at the end, we're gonna do a little bass line thing that carries us into the G chord. And you'll hear this on the recording. That's why I'm putting it in the lesson. Um, we just go O, two on the thickest string. And then we put our middle finger down on the third fret and we do a down stroke on our G chord. So we're on E minor, down, root, down, O, two, G. Just try that, just that one bit. Down, root, down, O, two, G. And once we land on the G chord, you know, we just keep doing our strumming pattern as usual. And then we go down, down, up. And we switch to A and we go down, down, up. So that's pretty straightforward. Just down, down, up on G, down, down, up on A. And then we do that all over again. And now here, when we're going back into the verse, we just do our starting pattern on D, on A over C sharp, and then we just do a down stroke on E minor, and we just let it ring out, just like this. And in the same way that we like built up into the chorus, by just doing that down stroke on E minor, that helps us kind of cool off and go back into the nice, gentle verse. Anyways, just like before, I'm gonna play through this whole thing nice and slow, starting off on D. One, two, three, four. So that's the majority of the song. From this point, all we have is the bridge, which is like a whole other section with its own chord shapes and everything, and also some variations on the parts that we've done so far. So just taking what we've done so far and just kind of cutting out little bits or adding little bits to it. And the first one is during the second verse. The second verse is almost like the first verse, except the second time you get to B minor. So we play through the whole thing. I could stay away just to hear you breathe in. Watch you smile while you are sleeping. While you're far away dreaming. I could blow my eyes. Da -da 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 -da. So we get to that point. And then he skips the next three chords. We just cut that out and we cut straight to So we don't have to learn anything new. We're basically just cutting out three chords from it and that's it. You know, we're just like chopping a part out. Otherwise it's like exactly the same. And the other variation is on the second chorus and it's gonna be exactly the same. You know, we're just gonna go through this. Close my eyes, I don't wanna fall asleep cause I miss you baby and I don't wanna miss a thing. And then instead of going, Instead of doing that, we're just going to strum the D chord once and go straight into the bridge, which starts off on a C chord. So let's actually take a look at that bridge right now. We start off on a C chord and we're going to do our strumming pattern two times. Then we go to G over B. And for G over B, I recommend this voicing because it lets you strum pretty hard. You know, for fingerstyle, I use different voicings sometimes, but um, 
The tip of my index finger is lightly touching the thickest string. Otherwise, it's just like a regular G chord, you know? I just go like that and I'm free to strum. The thickest string is muted, so it's not gonna like start ringing out and ruining our chord shape. We do it two times on that chord. Then we go to a B flat. And that's a bar chord. And if that's giving you some trouble, I do recommend checking out my bar chords course, Bar Chords Made Easy. There's a free trial available. I'll put a link down below for that one. And after that, we go to F over A. And for this one, I'm basically touching the first fret of the B string, second fret, third fret, and I'm making sure that the underside of my first finger is muting the highest string, and my thumb is muting the thickest string. So we just get the middle four strings. Just open, three, two, one. Strumming pattern twice on that. Then we go back to C, two times. I feel your heart so close to mine. Same thing. And now here we go to D minor. The A chord, and we do it four times on the A chord. Anyways, um, so this part is probably like the easiest part of the song. It's just straight up chords and a strumming pattern. Aside from that bar chord, it's not too difficult. So let's just play through the whole thing together. Or you can just watch me do it. Honestly, it's not too tricky. Starting off on a C chord. Uh, one, two, three, four. So from there, we would just go back into the chorus and it's just going to be the same progression over and over again and then the song fades out, except the fourth time. It's almost the same, except we're going to change the, the D chord at the beginning to a B minor 7 chord. And that is just like a B minor chord, B minor bar chord, except we take off our pinky. So instead of like... So yeah, it's just the same progression except we change the first chord to a B minor once, the fourth time. Uh, when you listen to the recording, you'll totally catch that. And um, at this point, you know all the components. You know, we have all the bits that make up this song. So all you have to do is listen to the song like a trillion times and start putting it together. You know, being familiar with the song is as important as being familiar with how to play all the parts, you know, because then you'll be able to tell when things are coming, you know, it, it makes all the difference. Now, um, as far as assembling this one, it's super duper straightforward. You just play the verse, and then you play the chorus, and then you play the second verse, the second chorus, the bridge, and then the final bit. I've shown you all the parts. It's just a matter of practicing it out, putting it together, and eventually, when you're ready, playing along with the original recording. Hope you have a good time practicing this one. Don't forget, if you need any extra help, I have my bar chords course, and I have my upcoming finger style course. And um, I also have my free ebook, which I forgot to mention, which is worth, a, you know, it's worth checking out. It has all the basics and a few other things in there. So I'll put links to all that stuff down below. Otherwise, once again, I hope you have a good time with this one, and I'll see you soon. Is it really gonna be easier to train a bunch of oil drillers whatever you call them, how to be astronauts? Or would it be easier to train astronauts how to drill for oil? I'm honestly, like, that's the only thing that bugs me about that movie.